The Sense Rights is definitely an odd duck. This first season has been really consistent so far, and I was hoping that it would continue that streak with its last two episodes, so has it? Well, I honestly really enjoyed the first part of the story. I found it to be intriguing, mysterious, and just flat out engaging. There was this sort of mystery and danger of the unknown factor that elevated the whole first episode and made it stand out as one of the best of the whole season, possibly rivaling the first part of an unearthly child, but I'm not quite sure about that. I was very impressed by it and was interested to see how it will be followed up. I was also surprised based on the IMDB ratings, which I don't always agree with, especially when it comes to Kazuko, but the fact that this story was one of the lowest rated of the entire season told me that I probably wasn't going to enjoy it very much. So after being really impressed by the first part, I was super excited because this episode definitely had a shot being my favorite if it continued to impress me so much. As I said, I was very impressed with this episode, and its mystery and danger of the unknown aspect really worked for me, which is exactly why everything went downhill for the next five parts, starting with the part one cliffhanger. It ends showing us what the sensorites actually are, which is a rather uninspired and somewhat traditional alien look with some kind of mild alterations, and it just doesn't work for me and the whole story just gets worse as it continues. And I almost feel bad for picking on their design and the look of the sensorites, but it just didn't work to me and it's really important to actually buying into them. And I found that the parts of the story I enjoyed the most were the ones without the sensorites on screen. The mystery and fear was no more and we were presented with these rather silly aliens for five more episodes, which is a significant portion of time and they were not able to carry, what was it, about two hours or so. And honestly, this episode goes on for far too long. These slow moving six part stories can work, definitely they can, I've seen them work just a couple episodes ago, and if they are engaging and give us interesting stuff by moving the characters and the story forward, then I can get into them, but this story just gets into a big lull towards the middle where there just isn't a lot going on, and it was overall quite uneven, and right at the end, when I thought it might be getting good again, it ended on a bad note. And spoilers, but not really spoilers ahead? Um, skip to this point if you want to skip right past that. The episode ended with the doctor saying that he was going to leave Ian at the next place they stopped at, which not only do I not believe for a second, but it's so cheap and it comes out of absolutely nowhere and it doesn't make sense for what we've seen in the episode. It's not played at all like it is in The Edge of Destruction, it's just a cheap cliffhanger and it doesn't work, and honestly, it worries me for the finale of the season. And outside of the ending scene, I did enjoy the Doctor in this one. He continues to become a more lighthearted character, and while he does retain a bit of his bitter and cynical side, it's just quite enjoyable to watch him. And also, we get the Doctor saying that he doesn't like weapons, although they can be useful. I'm really glad that he said that so early in the show, and I also really like the Doctor in a cape. I really hope that he keeps that cape. Also, I have to say that this story lacked something important to me. There was not enough Barbara. There's a significant portion of time when Barbara wasn't in the story, and honestly, that was when it was the least interesting. And when she came back, I got excited and I realized how much I missed her. And Susan was an interesting one in this one, and she wasn't behaving hysterically and freaking out as much, and we got some genuine insight into her character when she speaks of her home planet and how long it has been since she was there. We learn how she really wants to settle down, which is a rather interesting bit of insight into her. Also, she describes her home planet, Gallifrey, exactly as I know it from New Who, which just makes me happy that it stayed consistent. That's good. Ian is actually fairly likable in this one, not annoying, just a good presence and he he just fits in pretty well with the TARDIS team and I feel that I'm really coming around on him since the first couple of episodes. I don't think I have much else to say about this one. While there were some good parts with the characters, I found the whole story to be dragged out and uneven. After a very impressive first part, everything goes in directions that either bored or just kept me from getting invested. And almost entirely due to the sensorites themselves. With thanks to the first part of the story, the sensorites earns a rating of 7 out of 10.
Finally, I gave an episode a notably different rating from the others, although I would have preferred it to have gone in the other direction. Only one more to go with this first season, and I'm really hoping that they can pull off a solid conclusion, by which I just mean a good episode to end on. And if you join me again this coming Sunday, then I'll be re reviewing the season 1 finale of Doctor Who, The Reign of Terror. So be sure to let me know what you thought about this episode down below, and I hope to see you again next Sunday when I give you my thoughts on The Reign of Terror. Thanks for watching. Take care, and have a lovely week.